And uh, at this point, the base metal is just applied uniformly across our little uh, project here. And that may or may not make sense if I want to decide to you know, maybe make this back housing plastic or something. I probably want to want to replace that. That's very, very easy to do. We'll just need to assign a, uh, a mask based on material IDs uh, to this base metal uh, folder here. But I'm not going to do that right this minute. I think I want to kind of keep playing around with, with some of this metal here. So we have this metal is the foundation. And I kind of want to add a little bit of color variation. So I'm just going to control D. And let's just come over and give it like a little bit of like a, uh, a very mild kind of blue color. And then I'm going to add a black mask. Go back to my smart masks. And this is not something that I'm seeing reference over here. It's just, I just kind of feel like doing it. Uh, so we're going to grab edge rust. And so you can see, and if I, if I crank up the intensity a little bit, you can kind of see how that's coming through. But, you know, less is more when it comes to metal color. We're mostly just looking for a little, just a little very subtle variation, like some corrosion or something. And it feels like a little bit noisy. So the way that this smart mask is created is by like just layering regular masks that you can access in a specific way that they thought, oh, this looks good. We'll just go ahead and provide this directly to the user. So you can see Looks like this is kind of where our noise is coming from. So if I turn these guys on and then if I want, I can just grab that noisy stuff. And you can also just click on it and then come and see, all right, so this is getting this information from this, this rough, dirty grunge. So you can, you know, get in here and start tweaking things around a little bit. Maybe we'll throw a different grunge in there. Which of course, you will then need to go in and, well, let's see. Seems like there's maybe a sweet spot. And you can see there's like something kind of weird going on over there. So right now I've got my UV projection on. I'm just gonna switch this to triplanar projection, which may improve the appearance a little bit. I don't know. It seems like there's there's something, I think because this uh, this particular grayscale has this, it's hard to see because it's going off the, uh, the recording area, but it's got some like blotchy stuff. So this might not be the right one. Let's take a look at, we've got our grunge leaks here. So we can just kind of see, ah, that's better. I just don't want there to be like big, obvious, like weird stops in the pattern. I just want it to work kind of normally. So now that we've got that, maybe come over here and let's just can kind of punch it in a little bit better. Cool. All right, I still don't really like what's going with the dirt. It, it should feel darker and instead it's kind of coming through as being lighter. So let's just kind of revisit this. I'm going to turn all of these off and we'll see what it looks like with just a white mask. So that's that's kind of what I'm looking for, right? Like I feel like I should be seeing based on the properties of this layer, which is pretty dark, non-metal, kind of, kind of dull in the roughness and then like nothing fancy. It should be it should look like dirt, you know. Maybe it's got like a little bit more, some color to it. I don't know, something kind of earthy maybe. So let's figure out how we can preserve this. I'm gonna go to black mask, and then let's go back to our smart masks. And let's see, what do we have? Looking for something that's gonna be kind of cavities oriented. And I think I went with dirt cavities before. So let's just try it again and see if maybe if I just don't mess with it, it works better. There's that. Let's try cavity rust. Now nah, that's way too noisy. Uh, the other thing we could always do is just add a generator. And then we'll come over and select, we can try the mask builder. One of these has been deprecated and I can only there we are. So you said it says legacy there. So we'll grab mask editor. 
and it's going to have some default values. And again, if I hold Alt and I click the mask, I can see what I'm going to be getting here. I need to click on the mask. So we've got blur, uh, balance, balance basically like a contrast thing. Our textures, I don't think we've got anything plugged in by default to the textures. This is where they would go. So we could just go over to grunge and I'm just going to throw some textures in here kind of randomly and we can see if they make much of a difference. So when you grab a smart material, it's going to pretty much have all the stuff kind of already plugged in and set up. It can be kind of interesting to get in and mess with it. Let's see, texture opacity. And then texture 2 opacity. So you can kind of get kind of some blending here. With texture 02, going to need to get it to tile a little bit more. I'm not sure if that's something I can easily do here. Maybe, let's see. Normally I just jump in and, and uh, use one of the existing ones, but I kind of want to show you that you can actually, without too much thinking, you can get something that probably has never existed before. There we are, scale. And then I'm going to grab the opacity and just, that's the one I like. Let's see, texture, texture two opacity, just a tiny bit. And then it's always a good idea to hop back in. That's kind of what I'm going for. All right. So this has been pretty much completely random, you know, like not a whole lot of thought, just playing with some of the controls that are available directly in painter without using any of the pre-made stuff. Well, I did, and it didn't look that great. So anyway, hopefully that's uh, that's all reasonably clear of what I've done there. So I think that's gonna probably be a successful base layer. And uh, I think in the, we can go to pause the video now, and in the next one, we will go ahead and jump into adding some paint to this.